But the changes are coming, so let's get right to it and talk about all of the ups and downs for the next couple days. And at the end of the video tonight, we're going to take a look at uh, the longer, longer range, including some fresh model data for the winter season. Hey everyone, it's Eric here with Weather for Weather Geeks Thursday Evening Edition, and yeah, we are uh, at the grand finale, if you will, of the uh, really warm start to October. Now, tomorrow's still going to be mild, but not as warm as recent days. We did 81 today, uh, making it the fifth consecutive day with highs in the 80s to open the month of October, and of course we weren't alone. Everywhere where you see orange or yellow on this map, that was an above average high temperature today, but a couple of fronts on the map. One here is coming through tonight, and the, more, and the stronger front is out here across the upper Midwest. This is where the really cool air is, and that's what's going to head our way in about 24 hours or so. Now, I'm recording this video at 7.04. We actually have a little lightning and thunder in some parts of the area, coming towards Selineville and Hanoverton in western Columbiana County. Been some claps of thunder moving through the Carrollton area. And we had some thunder and lightning earlier uh, between Mansfield and Cleveland along I-71. Showers uh, will be pushing in uh, just after I record this video, and they'll be here for much of the night tonight. But it's been a lack of rain. It's kind of been a story of late. Today's Thursday, so we got an update on the U.S. drought monitor. And just about all of Ohio and all of western PA outlined in the abnormally dry designation. And we even have some moderate drought conditions uh, displayed across southern Ohio, western Ohio, and up around Erie and Ashtabula in northeast Ohio and northwest PA. We're going to get a nice drink of water, the lion's share of this coming tonight. But there could be a couple of showers tomorrow morning, another shower possibility tomorrow evening, and maybe some afternoon showers on Saturday. But again, the lion's share of this is tonight. And I think we're looking at probably a half an inch to an inch worth of rain on average across our region. So be one of the healthier drinks that we've had in the last several weeks. All right, we have not had a drop of rain during high school football Friday evenings yet this season. That could change here and there Friday evening. Now, it's certainly not gonna rain everywhere. I don't think thunder and lightning is very likely, but there could be a passing shower. It's still gonna be fairly mild, but uh, the number of hours in which we can say uh, it will be mild will uh, definitely be uh, numbered. Uh, the, <laughs> things are going to change just after our high school games Friday evening as much cooler air arrives. We'll wake up Saturday morning down in the 40s. In fact, I made a graphic today called Sweater Weather because it's here. Saturday morning in the, uh, in the 40s to around 50. Saturday afternoon no higher than the mid 50s. Now, our afternoon temperatures this weekend will be the coolest daytime highs we've had since the first handful of days of May. So it's been over five months. Sunday starts out in the lower 40s and then no higher than 50, 52 on average in the afternoon. That is a good 15 degrees cooler than average, and there'll be a feisty breeze out there this weekend as well, making it feel even cooler than it actually is. Again, best chance for showers on Saturday will be in the afternoon, but best chance for showers Friday will be first thing in the morning, and then maybe towards sunset in the evening, a scattering of showers. Saturday probably starts out with some sun, but I think clouds will win the battle in the afternoon, a scattering of sprinkles and showers. It'll be a raw afternoon, and speaking of raw, that's our Sunday forecast as well with clouds, sunny breaks, and maybe a passing shower, a gusty breeze in the mix as well. Penguin game day forecast is why she returns home for a 6 p.m. kickoff this week against Southern Illinois. We're looking for something around 51 at kickoff with a chance for a couple of showers and sprinkles. Highest chance for wet weather maybe during the first half, but I wouldn't be shocked if we had a lingering shower in parts of the area during the second half. 21 WFMJ, always a proud sponsor of this great event. It's the Youngstown Peace Race coming up on Sunday at about 10 o'clock. I will be participating in this. Uh, pretty good weather for runners. It'll be a little on the chilly side waiting to, you know, get off the starting line. But once you get moving and get running, yeah, it's not too bad. Upper 40s to around 50, and might there be a sprinkle or a shower? That'll be a possibility, but uh, not much rain coming our way on Sunday. Temperatures will moderate next week. By uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we're back to pretty close to average. But that moderation looks to be pretty brief. This is today's 8 to 14 day outlook, so really straddling the middle of October here with a warm west and cool east pattern returning. I think there's going to be another cold front uh, arriving sometime at the end of next week, maybe next weekend, that will knock those temperatures back. So we are not done with the chill just yet. All right, let's look ahead to the longer range. Today is the fifth day of the month. Every month on the fifth day of the month, we get a long range model update from the European Center and this is what we call the European Seasonal Guidance. And of course, we're gonna focus on the winter season, meteorological winter, December, January, and February. Now, this is not a forecast. This is not our forecast. Our forecast is still a month or so away. Um, this is a set of model guidance for the winter season. What we're looking at here, temperatures compared to the average. Now, this suite of modeling 
does have a hard time seeing cold and displaying it graphically in the longer range. So it's actually a little bit impressive that it sees this much blue for the winter season out here. That doesn't mean it's right, but it's kind of impressive to see that much blue on the map, um, considering you don't typically see a lot of blue on these longer range maps in recent years for uh, you know seasonal guidance. Taken literally, this suggests, of course, a warm winter compared to the average in, in Canada, the northeastern US, maybe cooler than average Intermountain West, parts of the Plain States. Uh, this is a fairly classic El Nino look. A lot of times El Nino is warm up here, cooler than average southern tier of states with a more active subtropical jet stream. Um, and so this doesn't stray too far from that classic El Nino look, but I'll tell you, there's a lot more going on with the forecast other than just El Nino uh, this winter. We're going to go into all those details in that annual winter forecast release coming up in a little more than a month, and I'll be sprinkling in occasional posts like this on Weather for Weather Geeks between now and a month from now, talking about the things I'm looking at and uh, considering when we put together our winter forecast. But that set of guidance taken literally would suggest that it ends up being kind of a wash temperature wise locally this winter. Uh, breaking it down by month, I didn't show you month by month, but breaking it down by month, the European would suggest that December's warm, February's cold, January's kind of a transitional month. Um, I do kind of subscribe to that idea that we're gonna get off to a slow start this winter. It seems unlikely that we'll have some sort of repeat of what we had at Christmas time last winter. Uh, December could be pretty darn warm. February could be pretty darn cold. That's kind of the way it looks right now. I subscribe to that idea right now, but we got a long way to go, a lot of stuff to look at over the next month. In the meantime, enjoy the pitter-patter of raindrops on your uh, windows tonight. A mild night tonight, but here comes the cold for the weekend. Have a great uh, Thursday night, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'll see you back here for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on Monday.